So let's go. So Nina weighed a random sample of 50 carats, so N is 50, from her shop and recorded the weight in grams to the nearest gram. So the results are summarized below. So one thing to know about this histogram, because this is a histogram, because we've got continuous data and whatnot. Now, one thing to note is that if you notice the gaps between 54 and 55, 59 and 60 and so on, there's like entire interval gaps, like one value difference. So to negate this effect, we must always do some sort of correction. That is, look at the midpoint between both of these values and say 54.5 and so on and backwards. How do we know this is because um, Nina actually recorded the weight to the nearest gram. So she's actually rounded down from some error interval. So there was probably an up and lower bound. This is the up and lower bound and there we go. Now let's look at each of the questions, yeah? So A, and I'm gonna do step by step, okay? So use linear interpolation to estimate the median weight of these carrots. Now to find the median weight, we need to firstly realize that we had 50 carrots and the median is the middle weight, so the so the, the halfway mark, so 50 over two, so it'll be the 25th carrot. Now to find the 25th carrot, my tip is to firstly always look at the frequency and do the cumulative frequency in brackets next to it. And you'll notice that the 25th carat has to be between 15 and 37. So I did this nice little diagram here. I put the medium on the top and 25 at the bottom, indicating this is the medium weight and the 25th uh, carat. And now I put some intervals here. I say between I say 25 is located between the 15th, the 15th carat and the 37th carat. And as for the weights, it's located again by between the 59.5th weight and 64.5th weight. So again. If you put 15 here, make sure you put 59.5 above it. If you put 37 here, make sure you put 64.5 above it. So here we go. That's it. So this is how you should demonstrate it. Now to actually solve it, what I do is that I treat this like a ratio. So I always write, okay, so let's do M subtract 64.5 over its proportion, which is 25 and 37. So I always match them up and I make another, I make an equal sign. I do another relationship. So I chose in this case 59.5 with 64.5 and of course is corresponding one 15 and 37. So they must be corresponding. You could do other values but you have to follow the direction of movement for both of them. And then you just solve for M and that's it 61.8. Now for the next one part B. So find an estimate for the mean weight of these carrots. Now to find the mean weight, the first thing you want to do is firstly work out what fx is because they only gave us a sum of fx squared which is useful for part c. So to get fx is just frequency times x which is 5 times 49.5 and you do each one. And then you find the sum of it and then when you add all these up you get the sum of fx which is 3085. Now to calculate the mean is just simply the sum of that over n which is 50. Putting this in the calculator you get 61.7. Perfect. Now, for part C, we need to find a standard deviation of these weights of these carrots. And to do that, I mean, I usually find the variance first because the reason why is because you could just simply square root the variance to get the answer. And that will give you the standard deviation. Now, the variance formula is as follows. It's actually the sum of fx squared. So it's going to be the value in the bracket over n, which is 50. So we have everything minus the mean squared. So minus 61.7 squared. And when you resolve that, you get an answer and then you just square root and voila 5.93 so these two are quite straightforward it's just formula based now here comes literally the main part so let's look at part d okay so a carrot is selected at random from nina's shop estimate the probability that the weight of this carrot is more than 70 grams okay now you gotta be very diligent here okay so what i did here is that i looked at the very last interval because that's where the 70 carat, 70 grams lie and I firstly just drew this as a rectangle across. So I just kind of visualized it. I treated the, the width as a class width, the weight, and then the height is the frequency density. Now drawing the, the rectangle, I just cut down 70 in the middle and, and I realized this is the interval we want, the area of interest. Now to work this all out, we know firstly a couple things. We know that the width between here is 10, so I put 10. Now to work out the height, if we know that the total area between here is 13, because frequency is area, we can just say 13 divided by the width, which is 10, will give us the height, 1.3. And that's it. Now you just use baseline's height to find area of the shaded part. So between 70 and 74.5, that's a width of 4.5. Height, 1.3. Multiply them and you get 5.85. And that's it. 
And because the question wants the probability, it's going to be 5.85 over the total number of outcomes, 50. So it will be 0.117. And that's it. That's literally number one wrapped up. And if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. Otherwise, let's keep going. So number two, let's do this thing. So the box plot shows the times T minutes it takes a group of office workers to travel to work. So as usual, I, you know, I just literally stuffed everything here, all my solutions, but we're going to walk through it. Now looking at every single details here, the first thing you want to note is that you've got this box plot. The lowest value is the minimum and here is the maximum. Technically, because we have an outlier, the maximum is really over here, 61. Now, and of course, this line here is the lower quartile and this is the upper quartile, with this one bang in the center being the median. Now, what's the question is asked? So, A, find the range of the times. So, the range would be the highest absolute value, which is 61, which is a little marker over here, minus the lowest possible value, which is over here, 20, which gives you 41. So, this one is quite, quite okay. Now, B, find the interquartile range of these times. So this is the difference between the upper quarter, which is over here, the edge of the box, the, the, ma the massive box of 37, and the lower quarter, which is 25. And this should give you 12. So quite easy. Now C, using the quartiles, okay, describe the skewness of the data. Give a reason. Now to describe skewness, you just have to look at the shape and ask yourself, where, how close is the median to the lower and upper quartile? So what I did here is I just found the, the change or the difference between the lower quarter to the, to the median, which is over here, which was 6, 31 take away 25, and the change between the median and, lo and, and the upper quartile, so the right side, which was 6. Now, if you get the same result, it is symmetrical. Otherwise, if the upper quartile was greater than the lower quartile, it would be, it would be rightly screwed, and otherwise, if it was the other direction, it would be, it would be negatively screwed. But yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. So this is simply no screw. Okay, next one. Now, here we go. So we still got D, E, and F. So let's have a look at what Chenna believes. So she believes that the house prices will be higher if the time to travel to work is shorter. I just highlighted this. So we should just quickly spot that if one if one goes up, other goes down, this is a negative correlation. Okay, they, they, they're inversely related. Now, she asked a random sample of these office workers for their house prices in pounds where X is measured in thousands and obtains the following statistics. So we've got the usual stats. Now calculate the R value between X and T, the correlation value. So between X and T, here is the standard formula, R equals SXT over the usual SXX and STT. Since we've got all the values, just smash it in and you realize you have a correlation which is so small, practically zero. Now state giving a reason whether or not your correlation supports Chen's belief. So Chenna's belief is a negative correlation. This is zero. The answer is no. So correlation is very close to zero. Hence, R equals 0 0.004 does not support the belief that house prices goes up as time travel to work is shorter. In fact, there is no correlation. So there is no pattern. That's, that's how it is. Now, here comes the last bit. Yeah? So Adam and Betty are part of the group of office workers and they have both moved house. Adam's time to travel to work changes from 32 minutes to 36 minutes. Okay, so for this part, F, this part was a bit confusing because you just need to realize that um, we're trying to modify the box plot, but not really, not, not in a great sense. Now, Bay's time to travel to work changes from 38 minutes to 58 minutes. Okay, so that's a significant change. That's 20 minutes ahead. So that could practically be an outlier, which it is. We'll get to that. Now, according to this statement, outliers are defined as values that are more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile. In maths terms, this means outlier is simply 1.5 times IQR. We can calculate IQR from the previous problem, 37 take away 25 is the difference between the quartiles, T plus, and again, above the upper quartile, plus the upper quartile. So if you just do the quick maths, plug in 12 here and plug in 37 because upper quartile is 37, you get 55. So essentially, just looking at base time, we can see that 58 minutes is above 55. So this means it's um, an outlier. Now, anyway, let's look at the question. So showing all necessary calculations, determine how the box plot of times to travel to work will change, then draw a new one. So Adam's one. So let's look at Adam's rate. So Adam got 36. Now 36 ooh, is actually between 31 and 37. So actually, 
it's between these ones so it, it doesn't really affect it so it's actually within the bulk of the distribution however betty's value is an outlier as 58 is bigger than 55 so it'll be somewhere on this side now i went ahead and drew this here so i got something like that so actually i did i lied <laughs> i copied and pasted from the first one and just stuck in an x there because why because all the values should be the same and yeah that's really it you just plug in x there and you're done now we have two outliers